Hey everybody, welcome back. And let's talk about recursion. Well, not, we're not going to talk about it, we're going to solve about it. Uh, we've seen that modulo, the remainder operator, can be used to test whether a number is even or odd by using modulo 2 to see whether it's divisible by 2. Here's another way to define whether a positive whole number is even or odd. 0 is even, 1 is odd. For any other number n, its evenness is the same as n minus 2. Define a recursive function is even, corresponding to this description. The function should accept a single parameter, a positive whole number, and return a boolean. Test it on 50 and 75, see how it behaves on negative 1. Why can you think of a way to fix this? Uh, well, I can already tell you that if we do this the way that I think they want us to, if we try it on negative 1, we're going to get an infinite loop. Because ideally, we're going to be testing the number to see if it's either 0 or 1. If it is not, we're going to check is even on whatever the number is minus 2. So one of the things that they kind of left out of that whole recursion section in this chapter was the idea of a base case versus a recursive case. And it didn't occur to me until now, even though the recursion section is about 20 minutes long, uh, that that's kind of, a, kind of weird they didn't say that. So what I mean by that is I'm going to write the recursive function is even. Is even said that it was going to take a number uh, n. That works. And, okay, so... Here's what I mean by a base case and recursive case. In one of the events, sorry, in two events, zero, uh, our number is zero and our number is one, we can return whether it's even or odd. Um, and it's gonna return true if it's even, uh, false if it's odd, except a single parameter, return a Boolean. Okay, so return a Boolean basically means what I just said. So what we'll do is we'll say, if n is zero, return uh, true. If n is 1, oh, go on, return false. Also, I decided I'm not going to code in the replit anymore just because, well, I don't like switching back and forth between the tabs. But you might, so please feel free to continue to do so if you would like to. Uh, if n is equal to, so here's what I mean by this. This is our base case. We are going to recurse until we get to a situation where either n is equal to 0 or n is equal to 1. We don't want to go any past that. However, in all other cases, which is to say n is not 0 and n is not 1, then what we want to do is we want to apply is even to whatever our number is minus 2. Apply is even to n minus 2. So, uh, and this is our recursive case. This is the situation where we're potentially going to be calling the function in itself. Uh, probably going to be a good idea to start with our base cases, so we'll say if n is equal to 0, and mm, I just can't bring myself to do that, uh, you know, leave out the curly braces and write the one line here. Um, I just, I don't like it. So we'll return true in that case. A lot of people always say at this point, well, shouldn't you do if else? I was like, yeah, you can, but you could also just do if. I like to leave them as if statements because I don't, hmm, I, I like the idea of it being separate when you're demonstrating it. Now, if you wanted to change this to an else, uh, to an if, else, if, else, then you absolutely could. Uh, this works the same way. And I would love to hear comments from anybody who is like, no, this is the total reason why you should absolutely use if else. So looking forward to that. Say if n is equal to one, we're gonna return false. And here's where the, um, well, sometimes people can be a little bit confused. What, the, what my pseudocode says is apply is even to n minus two. So we'll say is even uh, to n minus two. Now, I think what's going to happen here is we're going to get undefined for all of these. Now the reason is, is that we're not really, this is going to happen, it'll come down here and then it'll happen again, and it might cause an infinite loop because we don't, we don't have a way for the recursion to basically get back out. And what I mean by that is that if we call is even on 50, we're gonna call is even here, it's not zero, it's not one, so we're gonna call is even on 48. So if we go into there, we'll call, uh, and what would, would it, no, it would get to the bottom and it would stop, I suppose, because at some point it's going to be equal to 0 or 1. But it won't know how to return anything from the call to is even. You know what? Let's stop speculating. Let's just go ahead and run it. I'm going to get rid of this because this is just a barrel of laughs waiting to happen. Go ahead and run. Undefined and undefined. So, perfect. 
No infinite loop, and that's because we've pro uh, sorry, no infinitely recursive, you know, calls stack. So what that basically means is that we do make it down to one of these two instances. We do hit our base case, but we don't have any way for the overall, the first call to the function, to return that from it. Uh, and you might be thinking, wow, that must be a complicated situation. Or you might be thinking, hey, I already know the answer to this, just get to it already. We just return is even. And this essentially means I want to return whatever this expression evaluates to. And the fun part is, is that this expression is going to keep getting to this point in each inner function. So is even is going to open up another call to this function that's going to, again, miss 0 and 1, basically from 50 all the way down to 0, at which point it'll return true. So now that we have properly given ourselves both the base case and returned the recursive case, if we hit run, we're going to see that we get true and false, which is what we're looking for. Now, what they want us to do is to run this and crash us. You know what? Why not just see what happens? Um, well, I don't want to have to reopen this if it crashes. Well, actually, it'll probably tell me. So I'll go ahead and run this. Range error, maximum call stack size exceeded. Perfect. So they're basically telling us like, hey, uh, you, you recurse too far, it never stops. And the reason is, is that if we have negative one, let's look, it's not zero, so it's not gonna return true. It's not one, so it's not gonna return false. It's going to say, return is even on n minus two. Well, negative one minus two is negative three. Again, that's not zero or one, it's gonna be negative five, not zero or one, and we're gonna keep going because there is no way for the function to stop. It's just going to keep thinking that if I just do one more recursive case, it'll be fine, at which point, Wherever this function is running is like, ah, uh, that's enough, Junior. So it stops. All we need to do is talk about something called an edge case again. So our edge case is, what if the input is negative? Now, I would proffer that negative has nothing to do with what our function is up to. It is literally uh, an inconsequential port, part, sorry, it is an inconsequential portion of what's occurring here. So what we could say is, if n is less than zero, We got a couple of things here, and this is why it's a good idea to pseudocode first. We'll say, or pseudocode or plan, or just get a comment in there about what you're thinking of. Just say, make n not negative. So how do we make n not negative? A couple of ways. One would be assuming that n is negative and saying n is equal to negative n. That's one way. We're basically just assigning it to whatever the opposite is. However, I like math.absoluteValue. It's a little method on the math object don't worry about math object right now. But it's basically the same way we had math.min, which will give us the minimum of two values. Math.abs will give us the absolute value of a number. So if we say n is now equal to whatever the absolute value of n is, we're in good shape. So scroll on down here and hit run. And we get false. If we were to make this negative 14, it should be true. And it is. Excellent work, everybody. Thank you all. So we'll go ahead and copy our function. Bring it over to our exercises list. This one's called recursion. Do we have a? Um, we do not have a colon. Go ahead and paste that in. And again, we'll leave the notes just because sometimes they're nice to look at, especially if you're using these as like a, a study tool. And so, anything else? No, that's it. So that's all for recursion. On to bean counting next. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next one.